Recovery means to me is freedom and peace. There is hope. Recovery is awesome. Recovery works. Recovery is possible. There is hope. Recovery is possible. There is hope. Recovery to me means freedom. Recovery is possible. Recovery works. Recovery is always possible. It's fantastic. Progress, not perfection. Recovery is possible. Recovery works. Recovery is a journey, not a destination. Welcome to Montana's Peer Network Recovery Talks podcast. I'm Jim Haney. And I'm Nikki Russell. And welcome to another Recovery Talks podcast. Um, We are at the MPN office and we just literally just got done with a community meeting. And I don't know about you, but it always gets me pumped up and like enthusiastic and my my brain starts thinking about all the possibilities and and so at the moment I'm feeling really enthusiastic and I'm feeling really good because I feel like the the meeting went good went really well Mm -hmm. yeah I think I'm feeling um really awestruck and inspired by the community in Ennis the recovery community in Ennis, um, to be able to watch, like, I guess a community come up and want to change and want to make their community better, um, just by voicing their, um, experiences to the legislator. I thought that was really, I think that's really neat to watch. And then also I, uh, the legislature or the legislator, he was really, um, Nate, his name is Ken. Yeah. Yeah. Ken, Ken Walsh. Ken Walsh. And he was really authentic and humble. Agreed. Agreed. And Agreed. that was really, that was really interesting to me. And it was really nice to, it was really nice to hear. Yeah. 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 So this was our, our offices in Ennis. And so this was a, Gosh, we've had three of these with the recovery community, but this one mm-hmm. was with our local representative. And um, yeah, I think I love that he was honest in the very beginning and said, my passion is about ag and water rights and, you know, and that I don't know a lot about this, but I would like to. And it was really neat as people went around the room, some shared their time in recovery and told stories, but it was really um, what I heard was a lot of gratitude and I heard a lot of um, authenticity about their struggles in trying to help other people, that the lack of services in this community is at the heart of it and what does that look like? Here's what we can do. What can you do? And it was this nice back and forth um, conversation for a solid hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what I was feeling during that meeting was a complete connection to the whole community, the whole recovery community in that room, but also to the legislator, because it was kind of like it was lived it was kind of like it was a lived experience. Like it was kind of a little bit like it was peer support because he was, I'm going to this meeting for the first time, like for the first time watching this experience unfold and being a part of a meeting with a legislator. Mm. And it kind of felt like it was his first time meeting with a recovery community. Oh yeah. Talking about, I didn't think about that. You know what I mean? So I was like, I was like, Oh, this is this, this is something that I would not have predicted happening because I Mm. kind of have this, preconceived notion of what a legislator is of what politics is and Mm -hmm. he might have a preconceived notion about what recovery recovery is is, you know what i mean and there was a really really good connection in that way Mm -hmm. um and Mm -hmm. i i think that um i would thank him for that because he really walked in with an open mind and open heart and he really really listened to what everybody had to say Agreed. Agreed. I saw him taking some notes. He wrote some stuff down to himself. He had a real nice notebook. 
Yes, he did. He had a really <laughs> nice, that too. He had a really nice notebook. It wasn't a spiral bound notebook. It was a really, yeah. you could tell he's somebody who takes notes in his life and uses a notebook regularly. It was a high quality, looked really sharp. He was taking notes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's always a good sign, you know, because you mm -hmm. can't remember everything from an hour conversation with a whole room full of people. It's hard to remember that stuff. So that that felt really good. And I think everybody in the room said their piece. Yeah. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes there's people who don't, for whatever reason, don't speak up and mm -hmm. everybody kind of got to say some things and mm -hmm. it's interesting you brought up the piece about the legislate legislator your first time mm -hmm. meeting with one and i didn't even think about that ahead of time mm -hmm. because i've met with them for so long and so mm -hmm. many times mm -hmm. that it's not it, it it yeah the shine is wore off like i know they're normal people who have regular jobs and most are pretty down to earth when you get them in that type of a situation. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even think about that for you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's kind of been, ever since I became a peer support specialist, I have um, expanded my knowledge and I've been pushing past that fear threshold. Mm. Um, and it's, I mean, I guess I could kind of put them up on a pedestal a little bit, I mean, maybe they're worthy and I'm not worthy. You know what I mean? Like the, there could be those like sure. thought patterns, old sure. thought patterns like coming in, you know what I mean? And, um, but learning to like push past that mm -hmm. and, but actually mm -hmm. going through the experience, not keeping mm -hmm. it up in my head where it's just mm -hmm. a thought, but actually like walking, opening the door, walking in, mm -hmm. shaking his hand, mm -hmm. and then just like really being present in that moment mm -hmm. for what he has to say mm -hmm. without any judgment. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, that, yeah. that was huge. And, um, I thought the meeting, I thought the meeting went, went really, really well. And one thing that I heard that I, that stood out to me was, um, when one of the members said, um, he didn't want, he didn't want the whole system to change. He doesn't want like everything to change all at once. He just wants to help those few people who need it or who want it you know, and that's, yes. that's so, that's so important. Yes. I think for people that aren't in recovery or maybe even some who are in recovery mm -hmm. to realize like we, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we want to jump in, we want to jump in and we want to make everything okay. But maybe, maybe that's not where we start. Right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe people feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. who aren't in recovery. Like how do we fix this? So mm -hmm. I'm so afraid to do anything. So I'm not going to do anything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. One of the things that came out for me as I was watching and listening, you know, um, was like the recovery community spoke today hmm. and there wasn't a hesitancy, which there can sometimes be from the recovery community to speak, to use their voice. Because if you're talking to a person who's not in the recovery community, you do have to kind of explain things a little bit more, like what that actually means. And I was, um, yeah, just observing that because the language, the knowledge, the terminology, all of that is very important because whether this is the case today where we're talking to a representative or whether like in our next meeting, we're going to have right, the medical center and the health department, and we're going to have these other people there. It's so important that as people in recovery, we stay within our recovery language and we don't try to soften it for the public or, or officials or, right, that we still need to use our language because there is a language very unique to people who are in recovery, and we speak about things in a very specific way. And there's an honesty that comes out of that that is not harmful or negative. It's we're telling this like it is. And that I heard that from multiple people today. And I think that's really powerful because that doesn't always happen 
sometimes there's this reluctance to not open up a little more or to soften the language a little bit. And I think it's okay to be, to stay in your authentic self because that's how we talk to each other. We don't do that. But then it's like, oh, we're in front of some official. So we have to kind of. Okay. Yeah. So I, I get what you're saying because um, I think I was trying to get at that at the beginning, right? Like when we were talking about for me meeting the legislator and staying away from those old thought patterns, right? Mm -hmm. But staying present in this moment, staying mm -hmm. in within my, in this moment, within my healthy self, mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes when I have fear or um, I'm presented with somebody who maybe has more of something that I mm -hmm. think that I have, right? Then I can kind of like default is a good word, mm -hmm. default mm -hmm. into old thinking patterns, which turns into words, right? Like those mm -hmm. words will come right out based mm -hmm. off of those. Mm -hmm. um, but just kind of standing in that fear because fear is kind of, fear really isn't real. Uh, it feels real. It feels real. But mm -hmm. once I move past that and push past that and just stay right here and speak my heart, mm -hmm. which is something I never did before mm -hmm. because I thought that people would judge me. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. I thought that mm -hmm. what I was saying wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. I wasn't good enough. So mm -hmm. those words come from a like a facade, right? Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. come from something that's real for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that advocacy comes into play there. I think that's like that core truth of what advocacy is, mm -hmm. is when I mm -hmm. speak my truth, I'm advocating for me. Mm -hmm. I'm advocating for recovery. And it might not be what recovery looks like for you. Or mm -hmm. it might not even be the legislator's perspective mm -hmm. of what recovery should be, mm -hmm. but it's truly authentic mm -hmm. to who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think absolutely. that kind of comes through and hits, whether it's a disagreement or an agreement, I think it comes through and it hits a place of, I guess I keep using the word authenticity, but it's mm -hmm. probably the best way to describe that. It it's very genuine. That. Genuine. It's, it's, yeah. it's very genuine. And I think that when you get into recovery, because it, this was kind of said in the meeting, you know, some people disclosed their time in recovery. We're not talking about a room full of people who had six months in recovery. We're talking about a room full of people with years, decades combined. If you combined all the people in that room, there's a lot of years of recovery there. And that came out and people were genuine about it. And they were saying it in the, in the context that fit what we're talking about, right? Like, it's not like, oh, I have, you know, like, it's not about that. It's, it just naturally came out because they were being genuine and vulnerable at the same time saying, well, that's that was me back then, right? That's me. And that, that stuff, that's the stuff that I love within the recovery community. The genuineness and that the words we're using, we're not afraid to even say recovery. We're not afraid to talk about somebody detoxing we're not afraid to talk about somebody dying because they chose a different path that right and then you see and you hear you can see it in people's faces you can hear it in their words and the passion there were individuals sharing these experiences of trying to help people and the desperation that can happen in that that you're trying to help this person because you see yourself in that other person Regardless of if you got, you know, whatever, however many years, you know, five years or 30 years, you're trying to help this other person. And there's just this genuineness that it's coming from because you see yourself in them. And that came out. I heard that people talking about that and that it's, a, it's just like I say all the time with the staff, right? I'm always like, just speak from the heart right? Just, just speak from the heart because that's what will come through. That true recovery you will just come out. Mm -hmm. And that even though like today we're talking to a representative who we can often place on a pedestal and think they have some perceived power that makes them more important than us. Yeah. But 
that's really not true. Most of the legislators that I've met with and talked with, when you get to have these kinds of conversations, they're just regular people. I mean, this yeah. guy's a rancher, right? He had yeah. a, he had a previous profession, yeah. But he's just a rancher from small town Montana. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I love about recovery is, you know, before I got into recovery, I always wanted to make myself look better. You know what I mean? Sure, like, sure. I always wanted to represent like the thing that I was doing that was the best or mm -hmm. that you might like. Mm -hmm. Whereas now in recovery, my mm -hmm. language is this is what's actually happening to me in my life. This yes. is who I actually am in my life. I don't yes. need to glamorize that or glitter that up, yes. right? Yes. It's just who I am. And I have a lot of peace with that today. I don't want to become something. I am something, right? Nice. And so that that really comes through. That's the authenticity, the genuineness that. But the legislator today, he just cut himself right off of that pedestal right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He, he didn't want humble. to be there. He was, he, he was very yeah. humble in the beginning, right? But that's, that's also something that's really interesting because not all people are going to do that, right? And True. finding that and True. keeping that core within yourself. True. of knowing who you are and mm -hmm. just staying true to that, mm -hmm. even if the other person doesn't do that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as you were talking, I was thinking about all the times that I am, oh shoot, I lost that thought. But another <laughs> thought that I had, another thought that I had, and I just want to say it on the, on the podcast is like, it was so cool to be sitting next to you as a person in recovery, you know, mm -hmm. um, because that's you always represent MPN, but today you represented Ennis mm -hmm. and recovery, you know, and it was really neat to hear you talk about it from that perspective. How did that like, how did that feel? Well, it feels good. It's like I said, I mean, I think when, when you get around people who have deep recovery, deep layers of recovery, I can relate because, right, because I have a deep recovery. So I can really relate to that and I can connect with that and I feel at home with that. And and today I didn't, it's like, you know, I said, you know, the guys, the other guys didn't know this, but I emailed the representative from my personal email because I didn't want to make it about Montana's peer network. Because he's a representative. If he makes a few calls and says, hey, who's this guy, Jim Haney? Someone's going to say, oh, that's Montana's peer network. Oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, right? And I didn't want to make it about that. I wanted it to be about Ennis in the community. This is our third meeting that we've had. And this is truly about the recovery community saying we got to address some things here. So I wanted to make sure we stayed in that lane and not drift into oh, what's NPN all about and NPN this and NPN that because we can do that. And that's something that over time I've learned because it's almost what you described. People can get a little bit intimidated by MPN being in the room because of all the stuff that we've done around recovery and peer support across the entire state. And it doesn't matter what community I'm in, that can happen. So I'm always sort of like guarding. But today I was really guarding against it. This is my new community that I live in. And just like in Livingston, I want to be a leader in that community. I want to role model recovery. And so it's not that I don't want to talk about MPN. <laughs> I do. But it was... It was great the way it came up towards the end. And he even brought up a couple things about, you know, and we won't go into the details, but he brought them up and they were, they were, you know, okay, since you brought it up, you know, right? Like, yeah. it's like, you know, and so that tells me he's informed. That yeah. tells me he's informed. And so it felt really good because that's what I wanted it to be, because that's how you do really real community building is it has to come from the community. I think so many times throughout our history, MPN, so dozen, we're 12 plus years, these communities call and want us to come in and do it for them. 
And it's just like recovery. I can't do recovery for you. I can only be here with you. I can only share my own experience. I can tell you what other communities have done. I can tell you what some have done and succeeded and some didn't succeed. But it truly needs to come from the community. And I can share my experiences with you, but it really has to come from there. And it's not about some company coming in and all of a sudden offering blah, 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 and everything's going to change. The community has to embrace it. And we know we've had this conversation about some communities don't embrace recovery at all, Mm -hmm. you know, and some do, and some are really on it. And it feels like this is getting some momentum now. Mm -hmm. And the next meeting I look forward to because we're going to start bringing some of the entities, Mm -hmm. directors, and right, Mm -hmm. they're going to start coming in, Mm -hmm. expand that conversation. Then you start inviting the next sort of ring of people into that conversation, but the core of it has to keep coming from the recovery community. Yeah. 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 I think that it's, it's really um, critical for a person to understand like how much of a difference they can make in their community, because what we're seeing here in Ennis is what I've seen in a lot of different places. There's a lot of people who really want recovery. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who really want to help other people get recovery. And there's a lot of really important pieces in place, but there's a lot of really important pieces that aren't in place. Mm-hmm. And the, the things that you can do, or even just using your voice, how we were talking about language and mm-hmm. advocating mm-hmm. and and just being that genuine person mm-hmm. in recovery and mm-hmm. modeling mm-hmm. that out mm-hmm. in community mm-hmm. and how big of a difference that can make. You know, just yes. one little action and just one mm-hmm. little word can mm-hmm. be the seed that's planted that can start to make things happen. Yes. And I can see Ennis already having a movement mm-hmm. towards getting the, the services that they need. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I I think with the language piece, I think about like today. So the recovery community speaks, use its, use its genuine recovery voice. It speaks from the heart. Now the people listening who aren't in recovery hear those words and they carry those words with them to their family, to their other legislators to their coworkers to their right mm-hmm. that is powerful because recovery words are what i call centered around love and compassion you know now other people might describe them kind of in a different way but that's where i think they truly come from the part of ourselves that 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 loves and has compassion for others because we can relate I've been there, understand what's going on, right? So when we speak that way from that true, our true self, that genuine self, those words just come out so naturally and they're all positive, loving words. And then people pick up on that. And whether it's a peer or like today where you got somebody who's, you know, kind of important, they're going to, they heard those words. He might have even written some of those words down in his notebook Mm -hmm. that he's going to repeat back to Mm -hmm. himself, to his wife, to his family, whoever, right? And and then maybe they carry those words. Mm -hmm. And we heard a personal story of someone who's still out there, still struggling. Maybe one of those words makes it to that person. Yeah. Right? And where did it come from? Well, it came from this genuine meeting over here that had nothing to do with this other individual but those words were used and they came from this just authentic place. And you never know because I've seen that come full circle where it comes all the way back around. And then there's this person in front of you using these recovery words saying, oh, yeah, so and so this and then and then oh, yeah, and then boom. And now they're in front of you, mm-hmm. you know, however that happened. And now they're in front of you. And that's really like the magic of the universe and the power of recovery. Yeah. And I think cultivating it is important. You know what I mean? Like you're, when you're talking about love and, 
And that's where all those recovery words come from. I think it's really important to cultivate that so that you are not just autopilot coming out of your of your like conditioning or your old behavioral patterns. Right. So like, uh, gosh, I mean, I could get triggered so easily. It could it could just kind of like blindside me and I might not know it's coming, but if I've cultivated that healing within myself, whatever that looks like, you know, different for everybody, you know, then I can rely on that. That's so strong. And then that's where that place comes from. And the other part of language, I think that's really important is listening. You listen from yes. that same space. Yes. And that's where connection happens. Yes. You know, that's that's magic right there, right? When you have two people or you have a group of people who are connecting, mm -hmm. you know? Agreed. Um, and then I think sometimes, right, when I know when I'm peer supporting, sometimes I can get into that that place where maybe I've gotten triggered or maybe I don't feel like I know exactly what to say or how to handle that situation. And, mm -hmm. and I can go into that autopilot where I'm pu I'm pulling out of that, you know, and just remembering to to like take a few breaths and like you can cultivate that in the moment too, I think. You can, you can, less is more. That's one yeah. of, That's always one of my things when I go into things like this, like community meetings or a committee thing, you know, it's like to remind myself like less is more. People want to pack all this, all these words in there, but actually less words is better because if it's authentic and it comes from the heart, you don't have to pack it full of words. Yeah. Right? yeah. I don't need to cover every little thing. Just speak from the heart. Let that come out naturally. I could feel it. It, it was, I, I could feel it within that room. Yeah, it was visceral. Everybody in that room yeah. was tuned in to whoever was speaking and it very naturally went around the room to the different individuals. No one was talking over someone, nobody was, mm -hmm. it was just very natural moving around the room, the conversation. There was just lots of compassion in that room, lots of love, positivity. And it just, like I said, when we started, I mean, it it, it pumps me up, it, it like reinvigorates me and it's like, yes, it's like that is what it's all about. Yeah, I agree. It was awesome. All thank right. You. Well, no, thank you. Thank you. Well, it is time to wrap up another Recovery Talks podcast. We want to thank you, the listener, for tuning in. Uh, please check out our other Recovery Talks podcasts. We cover all kinds of topics of events and uh, peer support stuff and what MPN's up to and then lots of this uh, personal sharing of experiences. And so check us out on SoundCloud and iTunes, and uh, maybe you're just right on our website. You can, you can get them off our website also. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you. There's always hope. Recovery is possible. Recovery works. There's hope in recovery. Healing takes time. Recovery means resilience. You know you can get through anything. Recovery works. Recovery rocks!